For 40 years, neither he nor the disease that killed him have ever been publicly named. Known for all that time as Patient Zero, now we can finally call him by something else. His name was John Eady, and we believe he was the first man to die of AIDS in Britain. We've spent three months tracing his history, 49 years of life, reduced to just a few lines about his death in a medical journal in 1981. By searching thousands of death records, we found a man who died in the same place with the same symptoms, a rare form of pneumonia later linked to AIDS. Once we had his name, we could find the friends who nursed him. How are you doing, Paul? Hi, Tony. Tony, nice to meet Hello. you, Tony. He was a very charming man, he was always very friendly. And he was camp, yes, definitely. How did you find out that he was ill? He very quickly deteriorated and then ended up in hospital in, in London and we thought he had pneumonia or something. Never spoke to him again. Several of you have always known, haven't you, in your minds that he died of AIDS, but how does it feel to have that confirmed now? I think it's quite fitting that John can be remembered because there was such a stigma. We did go through a terrible time of our life. I think that's something we'll always remember. Death is the common denominator. It's assumed John caught HIV on a trip to America. In the early 80s there and here, almost no patients survived. This doctor was the first to study 400 of them. 399 out of 400 had died. We had nothing for the underlying disease, and indeed we still didn't know what the disease was. The power of this virus to kill people without interventions is quite extraordinary. It was 15 years before effective treatment. Now, drugs can stop you catching HIV and give you a normal life expectancy if you do. But 15,000 have died from AIDS in the UK, including Martin's friend, Terence Higgins, who until now was the first to be named. How many people do you think you lost to HIV AIDS? I started to write down guys' names in front of my Bible. I remember getting to 50, and I had to stop. <laughs> it was, they were all so young, they were all boys. Stigma and shame means many of them were very deliberately forgotten. But at least that first patient, John Eady, will now be remembered. Paul Brand, ITV News.